So we do have a nice, awesome waffle panel here, just like in SharePoint, um, that comes out from the side menu. Now Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and today I wanted to show you how to create a waffle menu pop out. Now it's fairly simple. If you notice when you're in SharePoint, there's always that little waffle icon and we want to replicate what they've created here in SharePoint. If you notice when you click on it, it kind of comes out from the waffle icon and spreads out and maybe under I'd say half a second it, it does this. So I want to recreate this. So I created the steps for you to make it simple for us. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a timer and it's going to be based on a variable timer that's when it's going to start and then we're going to create the waffle icon so that's going to be the icon in power apps and we're going to set the on select statement with a couple of variables and then we're going to create the rectangle the rectangle is going to be our panel and we're going to adjust the x value and the height and then finally we're going to set the timer to reset when the timer ends, this just fix a, a little problem where the panel reappears for maybe like half a second. So we really need to do this to fix a small problem. The first thing I want to do is create a timer. So in my input, I'm going to create a timer. I'm just going to remember, oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. My timer here, I'm going to call it um, waffle timer. just so I know that's my waffle timer so then what we're gonna do is on this timer on start on the timer start we're gonna set it to a variable now right now that variable is red because we haven't used it anywhere but let's go ahead and use that variable so we're gonna create an icon and it's gonna be a waffle and if you ever wondered why it was called a waffle menu you know now you know the waffle menu looks like a waffle so we have our waffle icon here and we're going to set up it on select to use two context variables. So update context. The first variable we're going to do is we're going to set that variable timer to false. So that's the one that starts our timer. And the reason we're setting it to false first is so the time is off everyone every time someone clicks on it, you know. A user could spam the waffle icon very quickly and we just want to make sure the timer is off every time before we turn the timer back on. So when we turn the timer back on, we're going to set up two variables. The first one is our waffle variable. So this is going to say, hey, uh, let's move our menu. And we're going to, every time we press the button, we're going to turn it on and off. Uh, so that's why we have that exclamation mark there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our timer variable to true. So we're doing two things. First, we're turning our timer off, then we're setting up two variables, our waffle variable, and we're turning our variable timer back on. So the next thing we want to do is create our panel. So our panel is just going to be a rectangle. Now you can make this whatever you want, but for my demonstration purposes, I'm just going to do a rectangle. And we're going to make it white. So let's make it white. And I guess the width, let's make it something, we'll keep it as that, as 115. So on our panel, what we want to do is adjust the X value. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an if statement. And this is using our variable, variable waffle. We're going to set it up to negative 115. So that's the our width. And then so we're going to push it off to the left side. We're going to push the panel off to the left side out of view while we're not using it. Else, we're going to say it's uh, negative 115, then 115 times our timer variable. So that's our variable. No, that's our waffle timer. That's actually the actual timer. So the actual timer dot value divided by the actual timer dot duration. That way we have it over time. We're missing a comma. There we go. So now we have our if statement. Uh, you can see the panel is off to the left side. If we were to zoom in a little bit, you can you wouldn't see the panel, but it's actually off here to the left side. 
Let's see what happens if we click on it. Oh, it's going really slow, right? Maybe we need to adjust our timer. So our timer duration, let's make it uh, one second for this time. So the duration is actually 1000. So let's go ahead and readjust it now. So we press on it, we see it come out. Now I, I don't have another waffle here to push it back in, but you can see our panel came out nice and slow. So let's go ahead and add another icon. And this is gonna be another waffle icon. And that's near the top somewhere. All right, so we have another waffle icon here. And this waffle icon is actually going to have the same X value as our rectangle. So we're going to set up the X value equal to that same, well, except for maybe we want, uh, let's, and you'll have to experiment with yourself here, negative 75. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? No, we're going to want negative, how about 25? Oh, 105, we'll just do that for now. That seems like it's where, and maybe it's a little off center, but on both waffle icons, what we wanna do is we wanna have the same equation. So update context, variable time or false, also the two part. So now both waffle icons are the same. So one second, you see it turns on and off. And this is where that reset comes in. You saw it flash there. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that problem too. So now we have a panel that pops out and a waffle icon. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna adjust the height of the panel, right? So we're gonna go back to our rectangle and we're gonna adjust the height. So the height is gonna be a little bit different, but not much. Variable height is the waffle and we're gonna say it's either zero or I believe it's 768 is the total height of our panel. We'll double check that in a second. And this is gonna be our waffle timer dot value divided by our waffle timer dot duration. All right, so now the panel is actually very small. You can see it comes out, it grows, goes back, it grows. So very simple here, isn't it? I'm making this so simple for you guys. Now, what we wanna do is on timer end, actually. So we're gonna to go to the timer, go to on timer end, and this is gonna fix our like double flash um, real quick. So if our variable waffle is true, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset the waffle timer, else it's gonna be false. So this is gonna fix our little flash now. So now, comes out, it grows. I'm gonna actually decrease the duration down to, I'd say, maybe, how about a 250? So, a fourth of a second. So now we have a nice waffle menu that appears and disappears. If you wanted to add your own links in here, you could do the same. So let's go ahead and add a link in there. Let's say we wanted to put our new event button inside our, our panel here. What we would do is we would just grab the X value of our panel. And we would just apply it to the X value of the button. And maybe it would be a little bit different, like it would be, um, 105, 105, and then we could change our new event button to maybe a square. So now when we select our waffle icon, you'll see we now can create a new event from our panel. Now there's one last thing you wanna do, and that is on visible of whichever screen your waffle is on. Uh, update the context of the variable waffle to true just for the first time on on visible that way um, you don't have to click the button twice so we do have a nice awesome waffle panel here just like in SharePoint um, that comes out from the side menu 
you could create a um, a shadow for your panel so I just copy pasted my panel right so I'm going to take the X value of our old panel put it in our new panel but this time the width I'm going to increase it by maybe uh, just a little bit so you can see and we'll change the color to black and so now if we push that rectangle backwards send it backwards behind our other panel you'll see there's a slight shadow behind it so if we made that gray these are just a little more things you can do for yourself so now our panel has a little bit of a shadow behind it and you could do the same thing for your waffle icon so let's say we had a waffle icon we'll paste it on top of it I'm gonna remove all the on select behind it and we're gonna move this send it back maybe not to the backwards send it back to the front send it backwards a little bit and then the position will make it 119 and the Y 115 and we'll change the color to maybe a white and maybe the height is a little off so 113 there we go so now our waffle icon actually looks a little 3d you can do some things like that so thank you guys for watching I wanted to make this as simple as I could for you it, it does get rather complex but here are the steps for creating the waffle icon obviously you need to adjust the numbers based on the width of your panel so this is actually the width of my panel I'm moving the X value to negative 238 of the width so it depends on the width of your panel what this number will be the height should be the same uh, there should be no problem there and these are the steps for creating a waffle there's only four of them with a couple sub steps in there uh, now you can create your own waffle panel uh, thank you guys for watching hopefully this was helpful I'll see you next time.